Imagine being Jesus and having a close companion named Peter. Every time you had a problem, Peter would deny and abandon you. First, he started in little things. He couldn't even agree with a servant girl that he was acquainted with you. And then when he thought that you were dead, he abandoned the only job you gave him to do and went back to his own business. Imagine you were Jesus. What would you do? What did Jesus do? Let's go to Galatians. Okay, now face John chapter 4 verse 7 and 1 Corinthians 3, 13 verse 4. I'll read it quickly. 1 John is where we've been talking and we've been staying on when we talked about begotten of love. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God for God is love. That's where we've been, we've been at two, week, two weeks ago. We established that we are the God begotten and we are beings of love. We have, and that when we say we are the God begotten and we are beings of love, we have to be ready to follow up that, that word, that statement with our actions. Because when we look at Jesus, this is something we said two weeks ago, I want to bring it so that I can build on it. When Jesus, when we look at Jesus Christ, we see the love of the Father. So men have to be able to look at us and see the love of Jesus. Last week, we noted that as a God, God begotten, we have the spirit of Christ. You and I have the same Holy Spirit that was in Christ Jesus when he lived on earth. So that also implies that we are wired to have the same results and to do the same things that Christ did. Because you cannot have someone's result unless you do the same thing that that person did. I'm building on because I want to take us to something very briefly. Now, in addressing the Galatian church, Paul understood that this rebuilding ruins, the ruins of lovelessness in the church cannot happen unless something else comes back to church, to, to the church. And then he said, he, he listed the fruits of the Spirit of Christ, which we said last week that we have. And the first and chief amongst them is love. So in understanding what he meant by love, I had to go to 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4. And today we'll pick just one word. Next week we'll build on that. It says, love suffers long and is kind. My interest, I went to King James because I'm interested in that suffers long. Love suffers long. Other versions will say love is patient. What does it mean to suffer long? It means to forbear, to endure, to be patient. Love is not hasty in punishment. It doesn't give up, neither does it lose faith. Patience with, virt patience with people, I'm sorry, is a virtue that must return to the body of Christ if the ruins of brotherly love is ever to be rebuilt. The Apostle Paul grabs the need, grabs the need of this virtue amongst believers. That's why he exhorted the church in Thessalonica and says, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and that's where we've been going to, and be patient towards all men. If you have related with a lot of people, you will know that dealing with people that are unruly, feeble-minded, timid, weak, are not the easiest thing to do in the world because they do not always respond to constructive counsel. You are saying one, they are hearing five. In our daily life and work, we will meet people in church, at home, at work, who are unruly, indisciplined, disorderly, lazy, disruptive. People who, are, who feel entitled but will not work. They, they, feel, they expect you to maintain them but are not, they do not want to work. Paul says to lovingly warn those ones. In our daily life and work, we will also meet people who behave like weight blankets. They are the stragglers, the discouraged, the inadequate, the timid, the disheartened, the faint-hearted, the feeble-minded, as King James will call them. We are told to comfort and encourage those ones. And when life crosses our paths with the weak and the exhausted, as beings of love, men and women who have been begotten of God, our assignment in their lives is to gently support and help them to stand. 
Sometimes, maybe you've already met a believer who is morally weak, who feels he still has to make some sacrifices in order to be saved. You meet people who are struggling with immorality, people who say yes today and, and act no tomorrow, people who literally look you in the eye and misreport you to preserve themselves. And people who have caused you to suffer the many things that you can probably add if you're given opportunity to talk about. God is calling us this morning back to the place of love. And in order to do that, is highlighting one virtue of love, patience. We cannot love these people if we are not truly patient. Our responsibility to the weak among us, to the idle, the lazy, the unruly, the indisciplined, is not to bury them, is not to cast them off. Our responsibility is to support and help them stand. So irrespective of whom you currently live and work with, God is calling us back today to come back to the place of patience. Jesus' patience towards faint-hearted Peter restored that faint-hearted, timid man, and he became a mighty apostolic pillar that glorified God, not only in life, but in death. If we don't lose faith, if we don't write off those people in our spheres that literally drive us mad, if we do not give up on them, then our different Peters will emerge from the rubble. Men and women will be mighty, bold, useful, trustworthy, and faithful. What's more, that's the only way we will tell the world we are truly born again. Because we, we, we all need men to be patient with us. You looking at me right now, you need somebody. There's an area of your life you need patience. So when you go back to that your spouse, to that your child, to that your, your husband, your, to, to that your staff at home, that your staff at work, remember that you need patience too. And so gift patience because you need patience. Gift patience because you, re you are a recipient of patience. God has been patient with us because he is love. We are the God begotten. We are called to be patient with others. May we please rise as we affirm the word of God this morning. Say with me, I am the son of God. Even if there's somebody you have not forgiven, and right now he's, he's, you're, you're feeling like running to that person, after service you'll forgive the person. Please bring the energy. I am the son of God. I am a representative of love. The Spirit of Christ lives in me and bears love as fruit. I have patience for my spouse, my children, and my domestic staff. I am quick to demonstrate patience towards people. I am patient with the downright unreasonable. I am patient with others because God is patient with me. Say it like you mean it. I am God's vessel of love. I am numbered amongst those called to love. I am a representative of love. I do not love in word alone, but in deed and in truth. I pray for those who persecute me. I am patient with people's demands and failings. I am begotten of love to manifest love. I am a being of love. I am an alert servant of the master. I am inventive in hospitality. I get along with people. I am not stuck up. I am not a quitter. I don't quit in hard times. I am a channel of blessing. I do not curse under my breast. I bless my enemies. I don't insist on getting even. I am God begotten. I am an ambassador of love to the nations. I have taken up permanent residence in a life of love. Love is at home and mature in me. 
I am redeemed from the spirit of frustration and impatience. I see men through the eyes of God. I am patient towards the idle, the timid, and the weak. My life is honoring to God. My words are edifying to men. My actions point men to Christ. God loves people through me. Open your mouth and just thank God for the privilege to represent him in the lives of everyone in your space. Tell him, Father, I thank you for the privilege to represent you to my spouse. Thank you for the privilege to represent you to my children. Thank you for the, the privilege to represent you to my staff. Thank you for the privilege to represent you in my sphere. Thank you for the privilege to love as you do. Thank you for the privilege to be your ambassador of love to the nations. May my life honor you. Awaken love in me. Awaken patience in me. Let me be patient towards people because I daily receive patience from you. Let me give patience to men because you have given me your patience. Open your mouth and just say thank you Jesus for the spirit of Christ. I love as you do. Father we thank you for the grace.